Hello everyone and welcome to game 4 of the 1971 uh, semi-final candidates match between uh, Bent Larson and Bobby Fischer. Now, uh, as I haven't uploaded for quite a while, uh, one whole day, uh, let's uh, just uh, figure out what happened uh, in this series. So first we covered the 1970 Palma de Mallorca tournament, which Bobby Fischer really, uh, where he obliterated the field. Uh, then we continued uh, with the Bobby Fischer versus Mark Temanov match, where he, uh, well, uh, did kind of crush Mark them out of 6-0, to uh, but if you haven't seen the games, then you know that it, it's not like he just came and crushed Mark them out of, he really put up uh, a very strong resistance. Uh, and then now we are covering Bent Larson versus Bobby Fischer, this is game number 4, we've already checked out game 1, 2 and 3, game 1 started with that beautiful rook captures an e5 move, uh, if you are new to this channel, perhaps uh, then do check out all of uh, the other videos as well from the series, uh, I will put uh, the, the links to the 3 games uh, between uh, Larson uh, in the description below. Uh, the first uh, three things you will see will be the links. So uh, saying that, uh, d let's check out this game. Uh, we do have a photo of this uh, event as we already mentioned in, in video one from the this match. I was play, uh, played in uh, Temple Beale College in Denver, Colorado. So there you have it, uh, a photo from game one. Uh, now let's uh, check out, sorry about that, uh, let's check out this uh, game. Uh, Fisher ha uh, Fisher has the black pieces uh, and the Larson opens with c4. So although we have the English, uh, Bobby replies with his uh, standard first four moves uh, that he uses against, well, not always, but against c4, d4, knight f3, uh, he, he often uses these first four moves. Uh, g6, knight f3, bishop g7, uh, d4, knight f6, knight c3, and we have castles here. Uh, we have the king's Indian defense on the board. Uh, e4, d6, and now comes bishop to e2. Uh, e5, this is the standard variation. Uh, we have castles, knight to c6, and d5. Knight to e7, uh, we have knight to d2, uh, and c5 here. Uh, c5, uh, a very nice idea by Fisher. Although at the time this was played, uh, it was thought to be a bit of a reckless move because it kind of uh, doesn't uh, go by the go by the principles. Uh, if you play the King's Indian defense, uh, you know that White will come at you uh, on the Queen side, and of course you want to play on the King side. You want to get your Knights out of the way, push the pawns, uh, and checkmate the White King. Uh, and it's kind of against the principles to push a pawn, uh, a side pawn on a side of the board where you are weaker. Uh, but okay, Fisher somehow, as you'll see, makes it work. He, he goes for c5. Uh, if knight to d7, for example, uh, instead of c5, if knight d7, uh, then b4, uh, and after f5 comes c5, and this uh, seems somewhat better for white. Uh, so okay, Fisher goes c5, uh, and here we have rook to b1. Uh, capturing this uh, Ampassan doesn't really achieve anything, it only strengthens black's center uh, and it uh, weakens white, so here rook to b1 was played. Uh, it's very interesting because uh, in 1961 a game between Pologuevsky and Dringo was played in uh, Belgrade, uh, where instead of rook to b1, a3 was played, and uh, the game continued pretty much the same as this game, uh, Larsen versus Fischer. Uh, 98 was played, b4, b6, uh, rook to b1, uh, we have f5 and here a, a4, knight to f6 and a5. So this is the position from the game uh, Pologevsky versus Tringo from 1969, uh, but this is also the position from the game uh, Larsen versus Fischer, the one that we are covering. Only difference is, uh, here in this position after c5, Larsen went immediately rook to b1, and this eventually won him the tempo. Uh, this game continued knight to e8, always a useful square for the knight in the king's Indian defense, b4, b6, a4, f5 now, uh, we have a5, knight to f6, and now it's white's move, and in the previous uh, position that we've shown, uh, the position is exactly the same, only it's black's move to play, so, uh, you know, after two years, an improvement in this position has been made, and uh, now white w wins a tempo. So here, Larson goes queen to a4, uh, queen to a4 with ideas of a captures and b6, uh, so you do have to uh, do something about this. Uh, as he increased the pressure on the queen side, bishop to d7. Fischer attacks Larsen's queen, queen to a3, uh, and now comes bishop to h6. Uh, already, this is move 15, Larsen is about to make his 16th move, and, uh, well, we could say that this is uh, a position where a turning point will occur. Uh, here, bishop to d3 was played by Larsen. As you can see, Fischer is kind of threatening to capture the knight on d2, uh, remove one of the defenders of the e4 pawn. Uh, but here, uh, later, it was found that Larsen should have went for b captures on c5. 
and after b captures on c5, now push a6. Uh, you know, uh, say to Fisher, you can have the pawn, but I'm continuing with what I started. I'm going to continue playing on the queen side, and I will play for activity here. Uh, and then after bishop captures, bishop captures and knight captures on e4, Fisher would win a pawn here. Uh, f captures on e4, but then after bishop to g5, you can see uh, that white simply has uh, so much activity here. Queen is coming to e3, this rook can come to b7, uh, a very nice position for white. Uh, but okay, uh, probably due to the fact that Larson did lose the first three games, he said, uh, okay, maybe not give up material, maybe, uh, maybe you know, material is better than activity, but who knows. Uh, bishop to d3, uh, protecting the pawn, and now queen to c7. B captures on c5, B captures on c5, and now, okay, now this did happen, but now a6 isn't really all that impressive. Uh, Fisher can simply, you know, block uh, Larson's rook with rook to b8. So, B captures on c5, and now E captures on f5 by Larson. G captures on f5, and now comes bishop to c2. Uh, also possible, and something that was discussed uh, during uh, the game, uh, was knight to b5. Simply forcing black to capture here, because you don't really have a good reply to this other than capturing the knight. And this bishop is a pretty strong piece, uh, you know. Because the d6 pawn is under attack, uh, under attack. There's no good square for the queen uh, other than b8 to keep protecting this pawn. And now you're simply aligning your queen with uh, with the rook here, uh, and uh, you know you're stifling the development of the rook on a8. Uh, but okay, after knight b5, bishop captures on b5 would be played, and here white would have the opportunity of either playing rook captures on b5 or perhaps even deciding to sacrifice a pawn by connecting these pawns, but then giving up this pawn. But after knight c4, it would, uh, you know, prove to be a very interesting game. Uh, but okay, uh, after g captures on f5, bishop to c2 was played, and now comes a6. Uh, a6. As Larsen failed to push a6 himself, now Fischer does it, uh, preventing Larsen from ever pushing a6 him himself, and also keeping an eye on this very important b5 square. Uh, knight d to e4. Uh, Larsen opens up an attack against Fischer's bishop on h6, and also threatening knight captures on f6 with check. Uh, bishop captures on c1 uh, with an attack on the queen, knight captures on f6 with check, rook captures on f6, and now rook captures on c1. Uh, we have rook a to f8, uh, and now comes rook to b6. A very nice active move by Larson, uh, but uh, even with such an active move, uh, the rook will be dis somewhat displaced here, as you'll see in the game. Uh, Fischer goes bishop to c c8. Uh, makes room for the queen to enter the game. Uh, we have knight to e2, and now comes f4, preventing Larsen from, uh, you know, uh, improving the position of his knight. Uh, we have bishop to e4, and now comes knight to f5. Uh, rook to c6, attacking Fischer's queen. Uh, Fischer goes queen to g7, and uh, this is Again, kind of a important moment in the game. Uh, as you can see, this is a very active rook, but the rook isn't really doing all that much here. Uh, in the game, the rook to b1 was played by Larsen, getting, uh, preparing the rook to come uh, also crashing down either to, uh, to the 8th rank or, or to the 6th rank. Uh, but king to h1, as you'll see in the game, uh, would have been much better as it, it would allow this rook to come to g1 and help out with the defense. Uh, here, rook to b1 was played, and now comes knight to h4. Knight to h4, uh, pressuring the, the g2 pawn. Okay, so, uh, at the moment, this bishop is guarding in the g2 pawn, but this bishop is coming to f5 to threaten the exchange, and of course, queen captures on g2 will be the threat. And now you see, if king to h1 was played on the previous move here, rook to g1 would actually be uh, an, excellent, an excellent defense. Uh, here we have queen to d3. Uh, this was played uh, in the game, but it's very interesting uh, when Fischer played uh, this knight, knight to h4 move. Uh, he also had to calculate what happens if rook captures on c8. And this is a very important line because, okay, it seems like uh, rook captures and queen to h3 uh, comes with a double attack. The rook is under attack and also the knight here. Uh, but it doesn't work because if you are persistent here after rook to f8 and you capture the knight, rook to h6 uh, will trap Larsen's queen. So a white would be lost here. So after knight h4, you, uh, Larsen saw that rook captures on c8 doesn't work. He went queen to d3, uh, guarding, uh, in, you know, giving further protection to the f5 square. Uh, but it doesn't matter. Bishop to f5 nonetheless by Fischer. Again, you can't capture here because you're still gonna be checkmated on g2. Uh, after bishop to f5, king to h1 was played. Uh, f3, now of course continuing the attack, and also blocking bishop's defense of the g2 square. Again, uh, the threat is queen captures uh, uh, on g2. Uh, 
Uh, knight to g3 and now f captures on g2 with check. Uh, you don't really have the option of capturing. If you capture, then simply uh, you lose the queen. Uh, so after f captures on g2, king to g1 was played and now comes bishop captures on e4. Uh, queen captures on e4 and now comes knight to f3 check. Uh, there are no options here for white. You can either capture the knight, which is a bit silly as the knight is protected, or you can play uh, king captures on g2, which was played in the game. Uh, but here Fischer simply played knight to d2 with an attack on uh, Larsen's queen, with an attack on Larsen's rook on b1. Uh, also the double rooks are threatening uh, to come crashing down on f2. Uh, so there is really nothing for white to do here. Whatever you play, uh, Fischer will simply pick up the rook, play rook captures on f2, and uh, it's a completely lost position for Larsen. So here uh, on move 33, after Fischer's knight to d2, uh, Bent Larsen resigned the game, and the result is now 4-0 uh, in Fischer's favor. So it's very interesting, uh, after this game, Larson uh, said that he was ill and, uh, you know, the match was uh, postponed. Uh, not the match, game 5 was postponed until Larson uh, starts feeling better. And uh, they didn't say why Larson was feeling uh, ill or what uh, what was actually wrong with him, but there were some mentions uh, that uh, <clears throat> due to the sea level of the city, you know, uh, or something like that, he, uh, that... Uh, uh, he didn't feel all that great, uh, but uh, he he will of course recover and uh, this match will continue and uh, so will we with this series. <laughs> so I do hope you enjoyed this game. Uh, Larson definitely didn't, and you can see if you followed uh, the series so far, you can see that in game one especially, but also in game two, uh, Larson really really played excellent chess. But then uh, even as he himself will say later, uh, his uh, performance simply dropped, as can be felt uh, in this game. Uh, you don't simply lose a game in 30 moves, uh, you know, when you're playing uh, the candidates match. So yeah, uh, that's the game. I do hope you enjoyed it and that you're enjoying the, the entire Bobby, Bobby Fischer series so far. Like I said, if you're new to the channel or maybe haven't uh, seen all of the games in the series and you are interested in Bobby Fischer, uh, do check out some interesting links in the description below. And like I said, I haven't uploaded in some time, uh, so there are uh, plenty of you who have uh, contributed to my channel. So I would like to thank all of you, and uh, as I don't have room for all of you uh, here in the, uh, on the screen, uh, I will oops, uh, I will thank you uh, this way, and also I will add all of your names into the description of the video, and I will uh, also uh, thank you in a couple of uh, other videos as well, as there are uh, simply too many of you. So I would like to thank uh, Dame Pletvarec, Bernard Flor, uh, Daniel Larson, Christopher Latvis, uh, Prabhakar Krishna, Travis Twig, uh, Steden Index NL uh, BV, uh, Gregory Molev, uh, Monique Castile, Guy Phillips, uh, Christopher Amolš, uh, Matthew Bell, Gil Troitsa, uh, Linat Suduiz, uh, Danny McCalla, uh, Robin Veer, uh, Cody Travis, uh, Mohamed Hisham Mol, uh, Warren Beck, uh, Nicholas Stiba, and Ray Fowler, uh, with his contribution, Ray Fowler has also uh, became also became the top contributor to this channel, uh, ending Sean Wilcoxon's uh, long reign uh, ever since uh, Christmas last year, I believe. Uh, so very very glad to see that you are still enjoying the content, uh, Ray. So yeah, uh, that's uh, it for this video. Like I said, I do hope you enjoyed it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, and uh, I will see you soon, uh, most likely with Game 5 of the 1971 uh, semifinal candidates match between uh, Bobby Fischer and Bent Larsen. Thank you all, and I'll see you soon.